today, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the use params hook in Next.js. We're going to cover what it is, why it's useful, and go over some bullet points about how it works. I'm going to show you some examples along the way. Now, this project here is something that I created just to kind of go through and up, provide easy ways to show examples. If you want to see that code and maybe even clone this project and get everything installed and kind of follow along, you can see this project here. I'll have it linked in the description below. And then here in VS Code, you can open the terminal. You can run npm install to install the packages. And then you can run npm run dev and start this locally on your own system. And you can see I have it running here as well on Logohost 3000. So let's first start with what is use params. It's a hook in Next.js that allows you to access the dynamic route parameters of a page. So what that means is it allows you to access, so like forward slash, and then if we are at one representing like post number one, use params will allow you to get this parameter right here, this dynamic parameter. And it returns use params, an object containing key value pairs of the parameters making it easy to retrieve and use them within your components. I already answered this a little bit with what is use params, but why is this useful? Well, it can allow you to access these dynamic parameters. And once I show you some examples, this might make more sense about why it's useful, but it allows you to access these dynamic parameters and it just kind of simplifies the process of getting those from the URL. And then as an example, if you're building an e-commerce page and each product has its own detail page, you could use the use params hook to fetch the product ID from the URL. So we'll show you this in a sec, but if it was like product ID one, product ID two, if you went to that specific product, you could then use the use params hook to get that you're on the detail page for product number two, and then go get more details for that product. One thing to know is that each property in the object is going to be an active dynamic segment. I'll show you what this represents right now. So in our project, what we have going on is we have a shop page and on this shop page, we basically iterate over a list of products. And then when you click on each product, it's going to link to a product ID page that is going to be forward slash shop forward slash whatever the product ID is. So we're going to have this shop page, which if we go to forward slash shop, we're going to see this shop page. And then I have these three products. And when I click on a product, it's going to take us to shop forward slash whatever that product ID is. So shop forward slash one forward slash two. And that's going to allow us to see at square brackets ID. This is a dynamic route segment in which we are going to show the product details for whatever product it is. And then here you can see at the top of the page, we're using the use params hook to get the ID. And what I meant earlier about if we go back to our homepage, what it means here to where it says each property in the object is an active dynamic segment. This is a dynamic segment. If you haven't seen my video on dynamic routes, that would be good to watch because that will help make more sense here. But effectively, when I use these square brackets here. Next.js is saying that you're making a dynamic segment to where if I go to forward slash shop forward slash any sort of value, it's going to match this page right here. And I can get the value of the dynamic segment here using use params. And it's going to destructure the ID property from use params because the, this right here is titled ID within square brackets. Our active dynamic segment is ID. So that is going to be the property on the object that use params returns. So if I console.log ID here, and then we go to forward slash shop, if I click on one of these products and I open my console, what you're going to see is that ID is one because I clicked on product one in our ID up here is one. If I come back and I click on product two, our ID is going to be two, as you see over here. And then we see 
the information for product two. And this is going to be ID because this is ID right here. If this was renamed to say product ID and I named it like that, then I would need to destructure product ID from use params because that is going to be the property on the object return from use params. It's going to match the current active dynamic segment. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it ID. So the way you use use params is first you import it from next navigation. Since this is a hook, it does need to be within a client component. There's other ways to handle this within server components, but within a client component, it's going to be the use params hook. You can also use the params object passed to pages within server components. So don't think that you can't get to the params within server components, but within the client component, it's going to be the use params hook and it's going to return an object in which the properties of the object are going to match your dynamic segment. And then if we come back to the home page here, you're also going to notice that. So the properties are the segment name. If ID is in the square bracket, the property on the object return from use frames is going to be a segment name, but the properties value is going to be what the segment is filled in with. So like I just showed you earlier, if we go to shop and we go to product three, the property name is going to be ID because our dynamic segment is ID within square brackets. But the property value here, which you can see is three, that is going to match whatever we're filling the dynamic segment in with. So it's going to be key value pairs. However, the value, it can either be an array or a string. So property value will be either a string or array of strings, depending on the type of dynamic segment for example, a catch-all. So if you create a catch-all dynamic segment here, and I rename this to dot, dot, dot ID. And right now in my product page, I have the logic to handle multiple products on a single page versus just one product. So you can look at the code to see kind of how I'm doing that here. But if you do a catch-all segment, the ID property is going to point to a value that is an array because it's a catch-all segment, which means that I could have forward slash two, forward slash three, forward slash one. And then this ID property is gonna point to an array of strings that have one, two, and three in it. So if we come back to shop and we go to one, that still works, but you see ID is now an array because this is a catch-all segment because I did dot, dot, dot ID. And if I do forward slash two, you see ID is now an array of two here with one and two, an array of strings. And if I add three, ID is now an array of three items, one, two, and three. So with a catch-all segment, your value of your param is going to point to an array of strings rather than just a singular string. And then finally, if we come back to my homepage here, if you have no dynamic parameters, so if the route contains no dynamic parameters, use params returns an empty object, which is good to know. It's not gonna return null, it's gonna return an empty object. So to recap here, use params is a client side hook that you can use to get the dynamic route parameters of the page. It returns an object containing key value pairs of the parameters. It can be helpful for easy access to these dynamic parameters, which might help you build something like an e-commerce page or even like a blog to where if the dynamic parameter is 24, you know that you need to get blog post 24 for that page or for the products example that I showed you earlier. Now from the use params hook, it's gonna return an object to where each property is gonna match the dynamic segment. So here our dynamic segment is ID. So the property that we're gonna get from the use params object that's returned is gonna be titled ID. And then that property is gonna to map to a value. So it's gonna be key value pairs. The value is either going to be just a string or an array of strings if it is a catch-all dynamic segment. And then if there's no dynamic parameters, it's just gonna return an empty object. So that is how the use params hook works in Next.js. When it comes to the URL parameters, whether you're using the use params hook or you're using the params 
object that is passed to pages within server components, it's, it's going to work fairly similar to what you're seeing here. So I think it's good to be familiar and with overall how this works. So thanks for tuning into this. Hope you learned something and I'll see you in that next one.